A good friend of mine, Mark Armitage, ran the microscopy lab at the University of California, set up that lab five years ago. Now he's an expert in microscopy. He's written multiple technical reports on finds he has discovered under the microscope. But he's also a Bible-believing Christian who assumes God is able to communicate what he means in God's word in a clear, straightforward way. Therefore, the worldwide flood was a real event. Well, on one of his summer breaks, he went to Montana and found a Triceratops horn and took it back to his lab and did original research where he dissolved away uh, the, the bone matrix, leaving soft, stretchy tissue. Now, as he continued to look, he found what are called osteocytes. Those are bone-making cells. They look like a, a long, lots of fingers sponge with lots of tentacles heading out in every direction. It's what makes the spongy, light, but very strong structure of the very bones of our body are these living osteocyte cells. They pull calcium around themselves to form the bone structure, but they're living cells. Now they're very fragile and extremely small, and yet these cells were still present in this dinosaur triceratops horn. Uh, it's, it's incredible that could have survived even a matter of thousands of years of burial, uh, and it's an impossibility that could still be around after millions of years. Now, as they started to show pictures of these to the students from the geology and paleontology departments there at the University of California, the professors of those departments became irate that it was being shown and implied to their students that there could be tissue inside of bind dinosaur bones that couldn't have survived millions of years. Uh, they literally complained and had Mark fired. They said, you keep your religion out of our school. Now, it had nothing to do with religion. He was showing them evidence of what could be found in the rock layers of the earth and letting them draw their own conclusions about it. Uh, and yet it undermined the conditioning and almost brainwashing of the story of evolution they were getting everywhere else. Mark went on to start the Soft Tissue Dinosaur Research Institute. Now, in addition to finding these osteocytes, these bone-making cells that still haven't decayed inside of dinosaur bones, he's went on to find nerve bundles, literally the very small microscopic wires, bundles of nerves that take signals through your bones and on up into your brain that should have long ago decayed. They look exactly like modern undecayed nerve bundles. In addition to that, he's been able to identify in almost every dinosaur fossil he's found, and it's been at least four different species of dinosaurs at this point, small capillaries inside of the bones, the fossilized bones, that are completely packed, filled with clotted blood. Now, one of the consequences of a drowning death is that the blood immediately will stop moving it will pack itself into the capillaries and it will clot while inside the cap capillaries, completely jamming it full like a log jam. But that means any iron inside of those blood cells is then locked in and cannot escape to get outside to, to preserve any sort of tissue elsewhere. So once again, iron could not have come from blood in order to preserve tissue as has been proposed. And furthermore, these dinosaurs died of drowning. Multiple species found in multiple locations all died of drowning. What event on Earth would have drowned essentially every dinosaur we seem to be finding? The flood of Noah. See, the whole story of evolution is a misinterpretation because it is leaving out what God has told us is the truth, so the evidence is being misinterpreted, and yet the evidence for the truth is apparent for anybody truly seeking it.